G'day world, Chris Hogan coming to you live from ISA Training's event, Entrepreneur's Real Story, and I have with me a media veteran, uh, Camilla Jansen, who is the founder and CEO of Business News Australia, and who is always behind the camera and never in front of it, so a real treat for, for me, uh, <laughs> known you for a long time. And uh, Camilla, how are you tonight? Yeah, I'm good, really, really good. Uh, it's been like a massive year, so now I'm coming towards the good part of part of it. <laughs> Camilla, you've run Business News Gold Coast, Brisbane, Australia for a long time and I would say that, oh, how long ago did you actually start the Entrepreneur uh, Awards? Uh, the first award was 2008, so yeah. It's during the GFC, uh, right? Oh no. <laughs> I timed that really well. <laughs> I, I also launched uh, Brisbane Business New, News that year, so it was a big year. But uh, yeah, I think I've gone through pretty much every cycle there is in the media landscape since then. So we're just talking off camera about how the celebration of young entrepreneurship is, is absolutely fantastic and giving out the awards is obviously really important because we have to celebrate the wins. But I personally uh, was my first time ever at the event and the first time nominated as well uh, in my last year of ever, ever being able to be a young entrepreneur. Uh, and so I was challenged by actually being there and, and, and felt like uh, a bit of a fraud in my last year as the young entrepreneur is probably my hardest year in business. So do you find that it's, it's important, just as important to celebrate the wins as it is, as it is to talk about, you know, I guess the hard times in, in business like, like it is, is here tonight? Uh, absolutely. I mean, you need to celebrate your wins and, and to celebrate what you have achieved, whether you've had a, a good year or a bad year. If you've had a bad year and you survived, that is certainly something to celebrate. And if you've had a great year, celebrate. But I think the entrepreneur initiative is for entrepreneurs to come together, to get to know each other and, uh, and kind of you're going through the same experience. So there's so many common factors and there would be no one that would understand you better if you've had a crappy year than an entrepreneur because mm. you can be sure that there's been ups and downs on, on their road too. Mm. What about you? Have you had any, I guess, uh, huge downs oh that, 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 uh, <laughs> that you, I guess, learnt the most from? I have had, uh, I, I think I could call it a roller coaster ride. Um, my business started in 2004 and um, I was a magazine publisher. Uh, then we moved into digital, we had the GFC, uh, I had to reinvent the business then and when uh, everything moved online I had to reinvent, reinvent business to, to be able to survive and 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 then I've just taken massive leaps and and becoming a national um, website and national news site uh, was one of them and yeah it's it's hard a lot of the times but I think the rewards is there and if you love what you do you just want to keep on going yeah and you know what I'd even forgotten that you had a magazine and I was reading it way back then as yeah. well so uh, yeah, that is a huge transition and I remember talking to you a lot uh, during those years about that transition. So um, what was one of the biggest, I guess, breakthroughs that you did make when undertaking that transition? Was there a, was there a single thing that, that I guess, m made it for you? Well, I, I think I could see the writing on the wall when it came to uh, being a magazine publisher and being able to... Um, uh, to, to run it uh, profitably so uh, I was able to plan so it was really nice to say that in at the end of 2014 that was going to be my last year of doing a printed magazine and beginning of 2015 I had planned to go completely digital and at the mid of that year to transform into Business News Australia so I think planning was really important for me to be able to go through that transition and then I think it's also just got to do it uh, you have to move with the times and you just can't not see what's coming so the articles that you publish on your platform are excellent articles um, there's no there's no you know I guess gate for me to have to sign up or, or pay to to read those articles uh, 
how do you do that when every, every other news channel or traditional you know, news channel is putting up a gate? Well, we're, we're, we're the advertisers, they, they are the ones that are supporting, uh, are supporting us. Without them, um, we, we wouldn't be able to pay our journalists and mm. that's what we want to do. Mm. So, um, yeah, the advertisers and, and they're coming onto a great platform as well. Our readers are fantastic. They're entrepreneurs, they're business professionals. They're really keen to uh, kind of lift their game and to um, stay stay on top of what's going on and, and wanting to do better. So, Because yeah, no one wants to pay for information or reading an article you know it's it's free everywhere else except for on the likes of uh, you know news.com.au in some respects so uh, I think that's a fantastic initiative and I hope it remains but you may you may make changes that but I, I certainly I certainly love or knowing that if I'm going to click that link I'm not going to I'm going to be successful in being able to read that article without having to sign up for something or pay my 50 cents a week or whatever it is so with regards to culture inside your your business, how do you breed a successful culture? Is it, have you got any tips and tricks for people out there? Well, I think yeah, they they must love what they're doing. They need to have this strong passion of um, entrepreneurs, and, and and I think the Young Entrepreneur Initiative is so great for us because we get to know get to know you guys so well and, and we can kind of understand how you're, how you're doing business and, and, and we can kind of follow you as well from when you are a small startup until you take out the top gong or you end up in one of our top company lists or you sell your business for hundreds of millions. So yeah, that's, that, that's really, I think. So having passionate people. That's right. And, and I think, um, but it's all about the stories. Mm. So, mm. for example, we don't particularly feel passionate about reporting on certain companies that we find are a bit institutional. <laughs> uh, uh, we don't think that they have a message that is really... Compelling. Compelling. Yeah, yeah. Or that anyone can no. really relate to. No, um, relatable, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, so that's kind of it. We, we have an editorial meeting every morning and we're just talking about uh, the stories that are out there and what we want to do and, and then we'll just go for it. And we're loving it. We love breaking news. Yeah. Great, great. So this may seem like a strange question for a media company, but how are you marketing your business? Oh gosh, how is that? Uh, how do we market our business? Well, um, through social media mainly. Um, we're, we're a small publisher, so our budget is really uh, limited. So we just do as much as we can um, with very small resource. Distribution of the content that you're writing. That's right. Yeah, yeah not, so not particularly putting out an ad saying, hey, come no. come over and advertise with us. It's no. actually the content that you're producing, right. putting it out there. Yeah. Effectively, that's content marketing. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you're... Which we do as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so um, I, I think our stories uh, are going to be, you know, if, if you like them, you're going to come to our site mm. and, and, and that's it. Mm. And if you don't, well... And you may yeah. notice your competitor advertising there and go, bloody hell, I want that, I want that spot and, and uh, ring you up and take it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that would be good, wouldn't it? <laughs> Fantastic. Is there any, I guess, rules that you have to choosing your customers? Like, is it, will you take everybody in any way or, or have no, you... Have you well, we, I, we do have rules. Uh, we do not um, take... Um, gaming clients for example so I think there's a moral compass somewhere and if I had the option uh, I, I probably would be a little bit more forceful would ah, but a ba uh, careful uh, balance isn't it <laughs> it's really hard I mean yeah. I know I know yeah. you have um, I know certain values which I might not uh, yeah. share here right now but um, that that might actually make you want to say no to certain advertisers but you just can't for business yeah. purposes and, and yeah. how do you how does that make you feel well some some we can say no to for example uh, google adverts advertising i've said completely no to uh, i've seen those third party adverts mm -hmm. coming onto other mm -hmm. sites and that could be like sbs or mm -hmm. Uh, I've seen them on the Australian, I've yep. seen the Morning Herald, uh, and it's been those fake news 
Bitcoin uh, advertising uh, articles claiming that the sharks from shark tanks have invested into their companies. They've been completely false. Mm. Uh, in fact, on the weekend I saw that on Facebook and I was just horrified. I just can't understand. So, yes, we do want to control that. We want to control who is coming to our site and what they're putting on there. It will not get up mm. on our site without approval. Mm. Fantastic. And what's the future look like for Business News Australia? And I would Australia? rather go broke than to let that happen. Yeah, that's yeah, right. It's, um, it, uh, it's thinking. Go broke on your own terms, not on somebody <laughs> else's. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> I can do that well enough myself without your help. <laughs> Fantastic. And so what's the future look like for Business News Australia? Is there, is there anything on the horizon? Yes, we've got so much coming up. It's super exciting. So uh, we finished the Brisbane and Gorkus Young Entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. We have Melbourne and Sydney coming up in mm -hmm. November. Mm -hmm. And the National Award would be in December. That is the first time ever. So we are so excited that we're going to be able to do that now, which just means that all the young entrepreneurs, it's just becoming a bigger group with a bigger network. And, and I think looking at the future, that's great. It just it ticks all the boxes of, of, of what we kind of want to do. Yeah. Am I going to have a chance at old entrepreneurs? Yeah. Business? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, Chris, if that's any help, I, I never won one either. I'm too old too. <laughs> It sucks, doesn't it? No, we it just have to. <laughs> yeah, well, apparently, um, I'm in my prime for being an entrepreneur. Like the the 40 year old dad see, is can... the most successful entrepreneur in the Perfect. world. Well, you can come and help me go. with the initiative. I certainly need any help I can get. To... Which one? Doing the yeah, old entrepreneur? Yeah, as an old and more experienced entrepreneur, oh, maybe right. we can help. Okay, cool. the younger group. Cool. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely we can. There's uh, many stories to share and That's right. and uh, and over the coming months you, you guys is going to see some really raw stories come out of not only myself but uh, plenty of entrepreneurs that uh, we'll see on Get Fact Up. So thanks so much for your time Thank Camilla. You, it's been an absolute pleasure. Oh, oh. So much respect for you and your business. Um, you. I've watched you for a long time and thanks very much for watching. Plenty more on Get Fact Up. Just search on for <laughs> just jump on memedia.com.au or you can search for get fact up i think we're the only one around so uh play more interviews coming to you very soon cheers <laughs>